We did a lot of things and that is preparing for the program. And on getting to Enugu on the hill, it was a boom. So how did you feel about Enugu on the hill, on the hilltop program? All right. Um, I was not opportune to be at Enugu on the hill because uh, we had to hold forth at the home front for you know some other activities and the rest of that. But I will share an experience, really. Uh, well, we connected online, saw everything that happened and the rest of that. Now, you will not believe uh, the kind of feeling I had when I went okay. to Enugu sometime last year, sometime last year for a church assignment. And uh, I just told the driver, please, can you take me to Igu Square? Let me see the place and the rest of that. Now, that was not my first time of going to Enugu. And that was not my first time of going to Igu Square. Okay. I did my okay. service in Enugu before going to law school and then coming back again for service. I was now posted to Ebony State. So I'm a bit familiar with Enugu okay. and the environs. Now, but on this particular occasion, I needed to go to Enugu because since after Enugu on the hill, I've not been to that area of Enugu. So I decided to go to Igu Square. And when I got into the arena, I am not exaggerating right now. I could still feel the the presence and you know have like a picture of the things that happened at Enugu on the hill when the watchman visited the place okay. and when the man ministered at the place. You know, the feeling was so real and the feeling was so much that I needed to take pictures. I don't know if I can share some pictures on this platform, but I needed to take pictures of you know the the monuments that has been set up uh, that was set up okay. there by the church mm -hmm. and then the state government gave it a very very strategic location where it is placed in, in that area so you could feel that you know something happened in this place there was a move of the presence and the power of god in this place and it was just very awesome the the, the talk is still very much in the town those who were there physically, they could tell you that for that period of the program, the town, the town was not the same, and it was okay. just a, a, a life-transforming experience. But for somebody who was not there during the program, and then coming into the arena years after the program, like three, four years after the program, and I could still feel, you know, the presence of the God in the arena. Oh, it was I was having some goose pimples on my body, like, what is this? <laughs> you know, this program held some years ago, and I could still feel oh, like, yeah. wow, like Jesus was there. You know, so that, that tells me, yeah. you know, in, in the level or, or the extent to which the power of God was made manifest at that program. And I just yeah. wish you can have a second touch, you know, a second touch of anybody. I can't wait. <laughs> I it's as though you are you are thinking what I am actually thinking. I have been waiting. I've been saying, when are we going to have another crusade? I can't wait because the experience I had at that program, oh my god, it was a great one. We shall we cannot exhaust it. But for you to have a touch, even after we had left that place. It yeah. means that the power of God actually is still there, even till today. It's still there. So anybody who wants to feel more of God's power and goes there now, it means that God will still touch the person if the person yeah, has that faith. That faith, that is just it. With the faith, that you get it. You get all that. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. So, um, Bro Austin, what was um, Enugu on the Hill Crusade? How did you feel? What, what? What um, excited you the most um, in the Enugu day? Or what miracle? What miracle did you get? Or did you hear from the participants that thrilled you the most? Okay, while we wait for Bro Austin, um, Bro Ezekiel, can you tell us your experience at the Enugu of the Hill Crusade, please? Wow. Um, the Enugu on the Hill program, the, that's bringing the Enugu on the Hill proper, um, it was a very um, wonderful program. 
Uh, I think that's the best word I have to describe it for now. Um, I, since I, okay, I won't say since I joined the Watchman because of course I was born in the Watchman. You know, this, that was, this is like my first, um, that was like my first, um, national program in terms of crusade that I attended. And, uh, the program was wonderful. I, you know, initially prior to the program, there were some, okay. um, little, there were some, um, delays okay. here and there, but when the program, when the program finally took place, uh, I mean, I was very happy that, I mean, the movement, the, the watchman, um, was able to organize such a program and we had the support of the governor. We had the governor in attendance. We had his, um, uh, his aides in attendance. It was a wonderful program, and I tell you that that program made me more proud of the Watchman. We saw wow. the miracles, we saw everything that happened. Even the GS himself, even the GMs himself was overwhelmed. I mean, the first time, his first ministration, yeah. you could see that he was overwhelmed. That's beautiful. Let, so, let, me, let me make a little contribution. I actually agree with what uh, Brezik has said. And um, mm -hmm. I was, like I said, I was not opportune to be at Inugu on the hill, but I was opportune to be at NBC on the hill. Okay? Uh, at NBC on the hill, yes, I think sir. I was much younger, very much younger in the faith and in the ministry and the rest of that. But the crowd at Inugu on the hill outnumbers NBC on the hill. All right? Yes. The venue was yes, bigger. The crowd was more, the logistics, the arrangements, everything. Well, I, I would say Enugu on the Hill held in the 21st century. <laughs> Maybe if we say on the Hill held in the 20th century. But looking at NBC on the Hill, <laughs> with, you know, looking back now, because I was there physically, looking back at NBC on the yeah. Hill, and then looking at the video of Enugu on the Hill, they're just far, way far apart. And Enugu on the Hill was just, it's just in its own class. It was a massive, massive outing, and it was just wonderful, you know. The arrangement was fine. I, I must say kudos to the media uh, uh, media team of the Watchman. The arrangement was very, very awesome. Uh, the broadcast was good. You know, you we all just stayed glued to the to the network. For those of us who were not there physically, we had to make do with what we had from GoTV and the rest of the pan platforms. Yeah. We had to stay you know, glued to all the platforms to make sure that we catch every moment from the time the man of God come out from the car, to the time he went to the sitting area, to the time he mounts the podium, and it's time of talking. Every moment was just unique. Every moment was like, wow, this is it, this is it. Yeah. You know, you just have to tell what next is going to happen, yes. and that was very wonderful. Yes, thank you so much. I think one good thing about Enugu on the Hill Talk proper was that it held in the 21st um, century. Even if you are not there physically, you can also follow online and get blessed. Thank you so much. So, Bro Austin, do you have anything, do you have any experience to share with us um, about the Enugu on the Hill? Do you have any experience to share with us? Yes. Um... It was a great experience for me because um, I I was one of the members of the subcommittee, so I um, was in the know of some of the um, preparatory programs, and I knew the level of commitment made by the church just to hold um, to hold that um, crusade. Um, it was a great experience. Um, the opportunity actually gave me some opportunity to have some close up um, meetings with. Um, the man of God and some of the um, wow. lesson pastors and committee members. And um, doing the program, working with the media was also an experience for me because uh, yeah. you could um, really see exactly what is happening everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> you could monitor I can everything. remember. We all worked what together. I can remember. It was, yeah. So at times when you look at some of the pictures and the expressions of people, you know that actually there was a Absolutely. great impartation. You walk exactly. on the streets, you get to see a lot of things. Um, indigenous dead, even tell you their personal experience, there was just a whole lot of things happening. It was an experience that actually we will not yeah. forget in Watchman. And thank God we have um, the um, recordings that we could, we could go back to um, 
exactly. enjoy the experience again. But it was, it was something that I just wish we can have um, something like that, probably in another state or probably Lagos. Yeah, it's it's something that actually we will um, by God's it, it was an experience. Thank God for the man of God for conceiving yeah. that vision long ago and also um, God yeah. giving him the ability to be able to carry out that um, vision. Um, it opened up a whole lot for us as a ministry because yeah. after Enugu, um, Kus you, you could see a whole lot of development following after because ne people never believe that actually we Yes, sir. Who, too, it's such a okay. big um, seed. So it was a great experience for everybody, everybody, really. <laughs> Thank um. God. That's I'm thinking. I'm thinking that the train can move to Abuja. Uh, Brazilian should be ready to host us, or we move the train. Wow, <laughs> Brazilian, are you ready? Yeah, are you ready for us? Okay. We, we, are you ready? We showed our ability during. We showed our capacity. We showed our capacity during the leave declaration. So we are leave declaration. I am coming to the leave declaration now. I'm coming to the leave declaration now. Okay. Yes. Okay. Talking about the leave declaration. We had clusters, we had the northern, we had we also had those in the eastern, and then I think we also had um the western as well. So I think we had the Abuja and you said you showed your capacity. So how did you how how did you how did it feel like hosting and for us to have watched you, those in Abuja Diocese, basically over to you. Uh First of all, I will make bold to say that Abuja had the best transmission so far during the leave declaration. I will make bold to say okay. that because when, um, yes, when um, uh, Bro Paul Igwe came, when Bro Paul Igwe came, you know, he saw the fellowship center, saw the environment, and he was like, wow, that he never okay. knew that we had a place like this. Had he been, he was aware he, he would have come with you know, several equipment to, you know, to add to what was uh, brought. But anyway, I was so happy because um, the leave declaration actually made us in Abuja to appreciate what we have. Because, you know, before yeah. now, we've not had, um, before that time, we've not had any gathering that, that uh, is beyond, um, you know, the normal gathering we usually hold in Abuja. But the leave declaration made us to understand that we have, um, I mean, we have a very good edifice, we have a very good building and you know it That's was true. it was wonderful it was wonderful the transmission okay. was very clear all the people are invited for the program they were very happy they were like wow so you have a man of god like this you know and mm -hmm. uh, it was wonderful it was wonderful i wouldn't want to talk about yeah. other uh, other congregation let me just um, stop here for now mm -hmm. but my wish my wish and desire yeah, it's is... It's good, it's good. You Thank you so have, much. At least there's nothing else. I say my wish and desire is if we could have another leap again. Even if it's oh. Abuja only this time around. We, we we hope and pray that the Lord will direct our, uh, our daddy once again. We yes, hope and yeah, pray he directs yes, him. Yes, I don't know that I agree with Brazil for the last statement. All right? Uh, but okay. I want to say this, since we are talking about the man of God, so let's not go into competition. Let's focus on the man of God. Now, yes, yes. I am, uh, I'm very sure that the man of God would not want, if, if the lip, next lip declaration is going to hold, of course, he would not want it to be that it's only Abuja that will host it. The GS is one person that loves equity and fairness. Mm. All right? He will always want whatever it is that is yeah. good the goose is also good for the gander. So let it go round. Let's all have a taste of the presence exactly. of the GS like it was during the leap declaration. Lagos had a taste, Enugu had a taste, Abuja had a taste, and then Portacourt also had a taste. It was very wonderful. It was very awesome. Okay. And if it's going to come up again, I'm sure that it's going to be like that. You see, one thing about the GS is that it has a way of making things to happen. 
he believes in mm. in impossibility yeah. for him nothing is impossible in okay. fact the word impossible also means i am possible so for the man of god everything is possible and that was why the church could pull enugu on the hill the church could pull mbc on the hill and then the church could pull a leap declaration you know back to back mm-hmm. moving from lagos to enugu to abuja to portacourt and you could see that even when he got to portacourt he was he was playing the table tennis like oh i just arrived there yesterday and i'm good i'm fit i'm able to go on and the rest of that you know so it is is mm-hmm. one person that for us for me in particular i look up to i i see his doggedness i see his commitment i see the way he is very you know pushing when it comes to what he believes in he believes that this thing mm-hmm. can fly this thing can Drive, and is ready to give in whatever it takes 100 to make it happen so for us that are coming up i think that's a very good lesson we need to learn now that he's clocking 79 you know we, we pray for long life we know that he has told us that even though he's 79 but his age is half what we know so i think his age is about 30 34 and a half years there about yeah. as, the, as, as the case may be it's now it's, it's now for us to me. look up to him and you know tap into that vigor, tap into that doggedness, tap into that visionary leadership that he has given to us over the years and try to see how we can run with it and also replicate it in those that are following us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, before we go to the last um, question, for today i would love to read out the shout out that has been sent by so many persons okay we have um igwe david saying happy birthday to you my daddy may god continue to soar higher may you continue to soar higher with the almighty god oh grateful to god for adding another year to your age happy birthday sir okay we have gift osandu Happy birthday, God General. May God continue to preserve you and confirm all his promises to you. Amen. Happy birthday, God General. May God grant all your heart desires in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Emmanuel Okudeli is saying, Happy birthday, the Abraham of our time. Wishing the very best of your heart desires. Oh, come, he came, he's saying, it's your moment. It's your birthday anniversary. It's your celebration. Enjoy it, daddy. Congratulations, sir. Chino so Anthony is saying, happy birthday, daddy. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you especially for that wonderful prayer for all the youths at Agudasurileri District, Lagos. The youth in Aguda Suriliri District, you have had a wonderful encounter with the man of God. So I'm a living testimony. Long live, long live the King, the Moses of our time. We have a lot of shout outs from wonderful people here. Handsome Daddy, lots of love, sir. Happy birthday to you. More grace, more anointing more unique revelations so blessed to be a child who is not happy to be the child of this wonderful daddy i am happy to be his child so happy birthday god's general prosperity will always remember you for your sacrificial life and service to god and humanity may god continue to keep you strong we cannot exhaust everything today but before we go Tonight, it's been a wonderful time in the show. I would love to hear from Brother Austin. What is that thrilling quality in the life of the man of God that inspires you? What is that thrilling quality? That thing you've seen the man of God um, displays that really makes you excited and it inspires you. Rustin, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Um, there are many things that inspires me from the life of the man of God. Um, one major thing is um, his dedication. 
his dedication to God and um, to the things of God. You could see a man who is um, so committed okay. to serve God, committed to doing the will of God, committed even if um, he has to sacrifice whatsoever. Okay. Um, you'll see him going ahead to sacrifice such a thing. And actually, it has actually played off in my own life. And um, okay. I've learned a lot of dedication from him. Also, um, humility, yeah, and um, just a whole lot. You see his um, diligence. You see him whenever he wants. And also, there is this excellent spirit that he has. Like, okay. if daddy wants something, he wants the best. He will never go for anything less than the best. Yes, if he wants to do something or wants something to be done, he goes for the best. He demands the best. And I think this is something um, we should also um, try to emulate. Another thing is, um, is physical fitness fitness, and fitness. You could see a man at this age being able to do so much. Like that, that leap declaration, nobody, people never believe that you'll be able to go to all these places without taking a rest. And um, even playing table tennis. And this is, he didn't play the table tennis just to sh um, for a show, but it's something he does on a regular basis. So he's a man yeah. given to um, physical fitness and um, exercise, which uh, many young people like us should actually learn because some of us, we don't take this thing serious. And if we yes. want to live long like our daddy, I think we should um, cultivate that habit of um, taking care of our physical fitness and um, also being dedicated to the things of God, just like him. Thank you. Thank you so much. So keywords, dedication to the things of God and the excellent spirit. Thank you so much. Um, Brother Ezekiel, what is that wonderful quality you've seen in the man of God? You know, you see, you when you were speaking, you said something about when you go close to the man of God, there is this aura around him. So what is that quality you've observed? about him that really inspires you or you would love to emulate and you would also want us to emulate uh, thank you very much i think um the man of god has so many qualities but one thing i admire in him is his leadership style okay. i admire his leadership style he's not a lone leader he's not a lone leader okay he's a leader who before he takes decisions, he tries to consult those who he's working with. I admire that so much. Okay. I've been opportuned to um, be in a situation where certain decisions that have that affect the movement want to be taken. He wants to um, make consultation. He wants to take in ideas. Just as Bro Austin said, he always wants to go for the best. He doesn't mind to spend to the last to get the best. I think I admire mm -hmm. that so much. And that has also affected me too because one thing about leadership, you know, it's as a leader, it is very it is easier for you to take decisions on your own independently. But then that has affected me in the sense that, I mean, um, with, the, with my in my little cycle, I try as much as possible to carry everybody along, listen to people, mm -hmm. give an opening ear, and that is who the man of God is. He gives if you mm -hmm. have an opportunity to meet with him, he's ready to listen to you. I mean, I sat down with him, discussed certain sensitive matter. I mean, the man of God sat down listening to me for several hours without making a yeah. statement. Without, you know, so I admire such so much with his level, cool. you know, with, with he has so much on his table, but then he's ready to listen and all that. Wow, thank you so much. So that's a very, very good quality, his leadership style. Thank you very, very much. So, um... Barista Michael, what's that wonderful quality in the man of God that you admire so much? You've also you've said some things, but I also wanted to say more things as well that you would want us to emulate. Thank you so much, sir. Wow, I, I started by saying that I can only speak from my perspective, like what Brazika said, what Bro Austin said, these are qualities that if you come close to the GS or you you see it, you just see him displaying these qualities you know without pretense so you know that this is who this person is all mm -hmm. right i will only add to what they've said uh, mm -hmm. the, the discipline of the man of god is something you cannot beat his discipline his attitude to his work 
the work in this case now is the ministry. Uh, he believed that if it is worth doing, it's worth doing well. And you see a man that is disciplined when it comes to the ministration of the word of God, when it comes to attending to the flocks under him, like what Brazekiel said, he can just sit down with you like this for hours and you think that he's not listening to you. But give him an opportunity to repeat everything you have said, then you will know that he captured everything that you said for that period. Okay. Now, over and above that, I will want to add his love. His love for God, wow. his love for the things of God, his love for his family, his love for the ministry, his love for his under mm -hmm. pastors, you know. And if you listen to him, you hear him talk about it. You hear him, you see him display that love and the rest of that. And even when yeah. you have done what is wrong and he wants to discipline you, you could see love in the midst of the discipline. You see, yeah. it, it is in, wow. in the course of relating with this that I came to understand the difference between, you know, punishment and discipline. It's a whole okay. lot. There's a big difference between punishment and discipline. Punishment is a form of discipline, but there is no iota of love. But discipline okay. is a form of punishment, but it has love daring. You know, a child has broken a glass cup and you want to beat that child, but you are beating the child in, in love. The child can okay. see that you are not just punishing me, but you are trying to correct me. You are trying to make me a better person, even though what I did was wrong. And you are trying to correct me, but you are doing it in love. And when you apply mm -hmm. that skill as a leader to so your followers, both as a husband, as a father, as a pastor, or whatever position you occupy as a leader, you will discover that it will draw your followers close to you. In fact, okay. when they do what is wrong, they will be the one to come and report themselves to you because they know that mm -hmm. when you want to discipline them, you will still see the love in you. You are trying to make them better. And that gives them the opportunity of actually becoming better and not becoming worse as a result of whatever it is that they have done. Mm -hmm. So his discipline, his love, his commitment to the work, you know, is his belief in the vision that is given to us. Of course, you've heard him say it over and over again that uh, the, 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 the one who has laid the foundation, the hand of Zerubbabel has laid the foundation, that same hand of Zerubbabel is going to finish it or you will bring him mm -hmm. to that for which you have called me and that without measure. That is what mm -hmm. I believe. And in following him, really, I see a man that has direction. I see a man that has focus. I see a man of vision. And it has also helped me in my own work as a person, as a husband, as a pastor, to walk in the path of vision. Because when you have vision, then you cannot miss it. It helps you to get to your destination and that on time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Two striking points. Discipline, and not just discipline, but discipline with love. You know, when you made some statement, I just, I, I just had to think some things because um, there's a difference between discipline with love and discipline with punishment. Because when you are disciplined with punishment, you will not, um, you will not be repentant. But if there is a, if there's love combined with that discipline there will be this humility and repentant heart. And that individual will know why he or she was disciplined. And as a result of that, will not repeat that action again. Then vision is another important thing. So every leader, everybody needs to have a vision to actually get to where he or she wants to go to or get to that particular point. So um, we have a lot of qualities um, displayed by the man of God. And um, I have also seen certain qualities from afar. I've not been an opportunity to be so close to him. At least still looking at him from afar, I see this um, quality of not giving up. I've seen this quality of not giving up. Despite everything, every challenge he has had in life, he is not giving up. He is striving. And that is one, what, one quality that we should have as a personality, as a leader, no matter the challenges we are facing in life, health-wise, every area of our life, we should not give up because at the end of time, God will always be there to help us. So thank you so much. Before we draw the curtain tonight, I would love to read more shout-outs from uh, our viewers out there. We have a lot of them. We have um, 
gift that Zamu is saying, God will continually bless and keep you for us, our daddy. You've done beyond good for us. I bless God for blessing us with you in this generation. Happy birthday, big daddy. Romanus Elichi is saying, happy birthday, big daddy. More years to celebrate. Wishing you a healthy body and greater grace. Long live the king. Uh-huh. So we have more. We have from Politics Media, the chariot of watchman and his horseman thereof. Glory to Jehovah Sabbath. Happy birthday, the Moses. Okay, we cannot exhaust everything tonight. But before we go, Bro Ezekiel, can you give a shout out to the man of God, the founder of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, and the person of Pastor Aloysius Chuku Emeka Onibo? Can you give a shout out to him? Uh, on behalf of um, Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, Abuja Diocese, and the not entirely, I want to say a very big happy birthday to the man of God. We're so happy to celebrate him. We're, we're so happy to support his ministry. And uh, we pray that our prayer and our heart desire is that God will continue to strengthen him. God will continue Amen. to give him. God will Amen. continue to um, strengthen those around him. And Amen. so that he will be able to fulfill the vision which the Lord has given to him. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Over to you, Brother Austin. Okay, happy, blessed, and glorious birthday, Daddy. Uh, okay. We thank God for your life and for the great life of service and impact you've lived and you're living. And we thank you for all the great things you've done for us and in the house of God. Um, we are grateful and glad to be your offspring. And um, I Put it up in a write-up I made that um, your life is like a great seed sown in the best fertile ground that has germinated, grown, and bore the best of fruits whose seeds mm. we are taking mm. to various parts of the world and sown mm. and have today germinated, grown, and are bearing fruits all over the world. And I'm glad to be one of those seeds that have been gotten from the fruits of the seed of your life, Daddy. And... Um, most times when we look around and we see the lot of exploits we are doing and we know that everything can actually be credited to you if you never answered that call i don't know what my life would have been today mm. even my own parents who came into the faith because of your life i don't know what would have been of them and when you look around us you see the thousands of souls that one answer you gave to god has yielded thank you so much daddy we are grateful and we'll live our life to keep telling you thank you so that when you see the fruits of our labors you say yes yeah. it was worth it all thank you yes. daddy thank you so much so finally over to you barrister uh, michael oyaga wow what more do i say well um mm. daddy, it's been wonderful working with you for this period uh, coming in contact with you uh, has made a lot of meaning in my life as a person. Um, I, I would say that meeting with you at Olale, not one-on-one, -on -one, anyway, but listening to you at Olale Community Hall changed the trajectory of my life and gave my life a direction. And here I am today saying a big thank you to you for answering that one call, that one call that has changed everything about us. And on behalf of the Watchman Young Adult Forum and my family, I want to say thank you very, very much. And we pray that a good God that we serve, that you are leading us, of course, in his worship and in his service. We continue to keep you alive for us. As a matter of fact, I introduced you to my children as their grandfather. Yeah. So <laughs> they don't know any other grandfather <laughs> apart from you. That's you beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, they, they don't know any other grandfather apart from the years. Oh so when they see his picture on that's my so phone, sweet. they see his picture on the wall, mm. they come to my office and they see his picture on the wall. Oh, that is grandpa. I say, yes, that is your grandfather. So thank you very much, Daddy, for being a father to us spiritually and also being a father to us physically. God bless you so very much. We are so proud of you and we are so glad that he gave us the privilege to be associated with you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Daddy. You've been a wonderful Daddy to us and to everyone 
close to you and those who are afar off. You've been a shepherd. You've been the Moses of the hour. We appreciate you and I appreciate you. On behalf of the voice of the Watchman Television and also Watchman Benin Diocese, that we want to wish you the best best day ever. The best is yet to come actually, but that we want to wish you a happy birthday, to wish you long life and prosperity. Okay, so we draw the curtain here and to our viewers out there, keep dropping your prayers, keep dropping and keep sending your shout out to the man of God. Definitely we are expecting that he will send his blessings. His blessings are already with us. So be expectant because his blessings and declarations are going to come and get ready for his blessings. So keep watching the voice of the Watchman Television. Keep watching the Watchman Young Adult Forum. We'll come your way next time. Until we come your way next time, do have a wonderful night rest. Bye. Thank you so much, our guest speakers. We are happy to have had you here. Good night and have a wonderful night rest. Thank you. Kuru Sanjale Vrana. Kuru Sanjale Vrana. I am a courier. I am a courier. I am a courier. I have his power. I have his anointing. I have his grace. I have his feeling virtue. And that is flowing. He's flowing to my children. Everybody that connected to me. It's flowing because I attached to Jesus. I'm attached to Jesus. And it's flowing to every child. Thank you, my father. Is there anybody that is there going to say episode of joy, following episode of joy? Episode of joy follows episode of joy in my life. Arusandra Lavena Trelikapuzna Shali Frezide Bekudumata Rentrona Rekaskumuse. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for your grace. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your faithfulness. I am fulfilled. The thing that you have told me is to come to pass. This is my day. This is my very day. The day of the enemy has come and gone forever. No man on earth should take glory to himself. All the glory must be. On the 17th of July, 2023, a great man turns 79. The man, an undaunted dogged general of the Lord's end time army, an enigma and God's apostle of the divine end time project. The man is one unique voice heralding the second advent of Christ. He is one of his kind in this generation. Join us to celebrate Pastor Aloysius Chukwemeka Ohanebo Onyinemelitobi as he moves into the last year of the Septuagenarians. Ride on graciously to the world of the Octogenarians, Daddy. We celebrate the great man of vision, an oracle of the Most High, the chief servant among the watchmen, the general superintendent of the Watchmen Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, a pastor and an astute leader. <laughs>